That was a lot of applause for a guy without a job. <laughs> I am currently unemployed, uh, not by choice, well, not by my choice, by somebody's choice. The last job I had advertised unlimited time off when I accepted it, I just didn't think it would be this unlimited. Uh, but honestly, I think it was meant to be because now I get to be a stay-at-home dad. Uh, that, that's gonna be hilarious in a second. <laughs> Being a stay-at-home dad is seriously the greatest. I, uh, no more coming home to a sink full of dishes. Falling behind on the laundry is a thing of the past. My wife can finish up her work day and do whatever it is she does in her spare time. But it would probably be a lot harder if I actually had kids. So, my fellow stay-at-home parents, uh, I think where you went wrong was letting society pressure you into feeling like you had to have a kid to be a stay-at-home parent. Why are we more accepting of this idea? Think about how cool a non-baby baby shower would be. When we had ours, we went down to the ABC store and we opened up a registry. There were gifts for him, gifts for her, gifts for the baby. Turns out my baby loves Jack Daniels. <laughs> or we could have uh, gender reveal parties without the amateur pyrotechnics and burning down grandma's backyard. I mean, we could still get drunk and burn down grandma's yard, but because we wanted to, not because we felt like we had to. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Andy, this is ridiculous. You can't be a stay-at-home dad without any kids. Hear me out. Hear me out. Tom Brady, probably the best football player to ever do it. Zero plays on defense. Beethoven, probably the best musical composer of all time. He wrote exactly zero drum solos. Andy, best stay-at-home dad ever. Zero kids. I have never had a child get hurt on my watch. Not a single boo-boo, scratchy, or ouchy. Not a one. I check most of the boxes, uh, but I will admit it's a little awkward going to the playground by myself or the parent pickup line. <laughs> But at least when I go to the youth soccer field with a Yeti full of Jack Daniels, I'm not costing a child a ton in future therapy, right? I mean, I still do that, but when I fight the refs, I'm not embarrassing a kid. Uh, it is a little awkward. <laughs> it is a little awkward uh, being unemployed after working your whole life, right? And uh, you gotta find ways to make money. It's not always legal, so I'll sell, I'll sell a dime bag here or there. Untax gambling. I'll sell my body. Uh, you can find me at OnlyFans.com slash not a daddy daddy. <laughs> but there is... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm running a sale right now. <laughs> but uh, there is one crime I refuse to commit. I think it's despicable. You know what it is? It's littering. If you litter, what is wrong with you? You couldn't bear to stare at that fast food bag in your passenger seat another moment so you chucked it out the window? Were you really that afraid your wife was gonna know you had Bojangles for lunch? <laughs> or uh, people who flick their cigarette butts all around town? They're disgusting, they smell bad, so do the cigarette butts. Uh, and I don't wanna deal with your butts, people, cut it out. That's the type of person who can't deal with the consequences of their own actions, so they make everyone else deal with it too. That's like going through a drive-through in a full minivan. If you're spending more than $20 at Dunkin' Donuts, go the fuck inside <laughs> and invest in an ashtray. But thankfully, I have an amazing support system. My friends and family, they say things to me like, don't get too down about being laid off. Use this as an opportunity to find something you're really passionate about. Little do they know, according to my therapist, I suffer from something called extreme indifference. <laughs> that means not only do I give, not give a single fuck about anything, it means I'm really good at it. <laughs> like, uh, I asked my wife on Wednesday night, I said, hey, what do you want to have for dinner? She said, I don't care. We still haven't eaten. <laughs> Saying I don't care to a person like me is the worst thing you could do. You just open it up to an I don't care gauntlet. We'll see who doesn't fucking care. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody say to you, I don't care how you do it, just get it done? Oh, <laughs> mistake. <laughs> I remember one time my dad said to me, I don't care how you do it, but this house better be clean by the time I get home. So I threw everything in the trash. <laughs> Throwing everything out seemed easier than actually cleaning. Huh? Uh, I did have a job recently, but I only had it for a couple days. It didn't work out, unfortunately. It was as a 911 operator. Uh, turns out being a 911 operator and not giving a fuck don't really mesh well. <laughs> but, you know, it, when they, and we watch a movie, 911 operators are supposed to say, 911, what's your emergency? I was like, 911, yeah. <laughs> but in my defense, it wasn't as interesting as the movies made it out to be. I didn't get a single call about someone hiding from a murderer or worried about a potential home invasion? No. 
all the calls I got were about car accidents or house fires that started off as gender reveal parties. <laughs> but I did have one memorable call while I was there. I'm at work, phone rings, 911, what's up? And the guy on the other end of the phone is irate. He says, hey, I think my roommate stole my drugs, man. And I said, oh, please hold. And I say, Steve, you got to stop calling me while I'm at work. We've been living together for about three years. You need to find a better hiding spot. Really, at this point, it's your fault. And he started yelling back at me, but I don't know what he said. I didn't care. I wasn't really listening. And when he stopped making noise, I said, all right, Steve. I'll replace your drugs, whatever, don't worry about it. Just don't tell social services. I don't want them to come take away my non-existent kid. <laughs> then I'm gonna have to get a job. It's my time, I'm Andy Chernowski, thanks guys. <laughs>